The crowbar was a pivotal weapon for Gordon Freeman's survival in Black Mesa. Without the crowbar, there is no Gordon Freeman, and without Gordon Freeman, there's no crowbar. The two are inseparable. It was his first weapon and has been with him ever since. It's a staple within the Half-Life series. I mean, the crowbar is so iconic that they made it into a real life thing. In this video, I'm going to be playing the entirety of Half-Life with just the crowbar and see how it goes. Because the crowbar deserves appreciation and I hate myself. So here's the rules. No weapons picked up can be used unless it's required to progress. We'll call these instances plausible contravention. Did I just make that word up? Yes, but it does sound cool. In-game objects such as turrets, tanks or barnies can be used for backup as well. Glitches or AI bugs are allowed to be exploited to their full potential. Also, it's gonna be on hard mode, so this should be fun. Keep in mind that I know next to nothing in terms of speedrun strats. I mean, I don't even know how to be hot. This challenge sounded pretty exciting in my head, so let's see if it mentally breaks me before I finish it. Alright, let me stop yapping. Let's just get straight into it. As I expected. After a long tram journey into the Black Mesa research facility, I was tasked with a very important experiment. Before doing so, I made sure to greet my fellow scientist colleagues, who were conducting such important tasks such as walking around a couple of paces to examine a screen, before doing the exact same thing again. Entering the test chamber, I was confident that things were going to work out. Yeah, never mind. Also, I must have terrible luck because how the hell did I get hit with a Vortigon during the disaster sequence? Now that the facility is in complete ruins, it was time for me to fulfill my purpose as Gordon Freeman. The moment I picked up the crowbar, I felt invincible. The rest of the level played out decently. I utilised Barney to take out the zombies since it wasn't worth the risk of getting too close to them. After that, I said goodbye to my friend before leaving and oh look at that, a pistol. Yeah we won't be needing that. The rest of the chapter just had me running through all the hazards. I started this challenge with the thought in mind that I have to preserve as much health as I can and it worked in my favour so I didn't face any real struggles or challenges mainly because Valve wanted you to rely on the crowbar and pistol so things were going pretty smooth sailing. This chapter was also a breeze in comparison to what was to come. I used the Barneys to preserve as much health as I could. I didn't go to the shotgun to pick it up anyway since you're required to shoot this zombie and save Barney for him to open up the stash of goods. So I just went on my way, running past all the major threats. I would usually use the grenade skip to get through a decent chunk of this chapter but since I'm only using the crowbar, I had to go through the usual route. It was here that I also realised that enemies in hard mode are just not worth fighting at all. By the time you're done with one, your health is chunked down to more than half, so it's best to just run past them. Making it near to the end, I came across a shotgun, but the med kits next to it looked more enticing. I made my way to the broken elevator, and with that, office complex was done. This chapter is where the struggle begins. I did everything in my power to use the skip with hurting the scientist and trying to get him to open the door but he just wouldn't so I had to resort to playing the chapter through his usual route, attempting to pace through everything. The first reveal of the soldier had me already regretting the choices in life that led up to this very moment. One singular soldier takes the piss to beat so I needed the cogs in my brain to start turning to figure out how I'm gonna deal with the next firefight. Yeah I just ran straight through it. Ain't no way I'm dealing with all that. Fortunately for the next firefight, I had a plan. There's a barnacle that hangs above the steps, so all I had to do was aggro the grunts one by one and have them run into the barnacle. The only problem was the last grunt at the top of the catwalk. He kept running around, trying to find a suitable spot where he could take aim and shoot. But there was a barnacle right behind him and he got himself caught minutes after, which was a W for me. As for the rest of the chapter, I was just running past everything without batting an eye, only stopping for health, which now leads us to...
This was yet another easy chapter and a good break from the rampant and stressful soldiers that the last chapter had gifted me. The game lets you know that the tentacles are only attracted by sound, so you're supposed to use grenades to distract them. With only the crowbar, it was honestly just as easy. You have to wait until they get uninterested and just have to stay quiet to move around them. Now. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, arguably the biggest problem in this challenge. I know I'm not technically killing the tentacles with the crowbar, but there really isn't any way to progress without igniting the rocket engine. Besides, I can refer back to rule 1 with the whole plausible contravention. So we're still gaming. This is where the cracks in my sanity start to show. The objective of Power Up is to essentially turn on the power, fighting the aliens and soldiers along the way. Now I could just pick up the trip mines from earlier and completely skip past this level, but what's the challenge in that? Besides, the level is doable with just the crowbar, but it is a massive struggle. Of course, taking out the soldiers with the crowbar was next to impossible. Luckily, their AI is so smart to the point where they understand just how hard this challenge was for me, so they just bomb themselves. How nice of them. Now there wasn't really any way around these two so I just had to crowbar them to death, completely tanking my health. This open area with the sandbags had me thinking about how I was going to tackle on like 10 soldiers at once. What I did was get underneath this small passage into a room and peeked my head out every now and then for the soldiers to just come closer so I could beat them to death. But to my surprise, these highly trained military men just decided to toss grenades at each other so that was good for me. To take out the rest, I broke open this strange terminal thing. Once it was broken, it had a pipe that was shooting out a constant flame, to which the soldiers just ran into and turned into gibbs. Once the soldiers were cleared, I hopped into the elevator and jumped over the trip mine. This will be important in about 2 seconds. I killed the hound eyes with ease and switched on the power. Now I kept on the trip mines for the two soldiers who come down on the elevator once you start backtracking. They blew themselves up. Now I had to deal with 10 more once coming back up. My initial plan was to run straight past them but my health was just way too low for that. So I just kept dying. So I went back to my trusty flamethrower pipe and just cheesed out the soldiers that were walking into them. Definitely peak gameplay. Then I blew up the guard because there was no way I'd be able to progress without taking him out. Then I hopped on the tram and went straight to. This was a chill chapter, I could honestly run past all the sections as the soldiers and aliens were just busy fighting one another. Stopping around for health wasn't really an option and I just had to keep moving. I picked up a shotgun as I was moving too but went straight back to the crowbar. After this loading screen, there are three soldiers on a platform to my left. One is scripted to fire his grenade launcher, one has a shotgun and the other just locks onto you so there really was no room for a margin of error when getting past this. I don't know how the hell I got past this but I couldn't even catch a break as multiple Vortigons started spawning to mess up the soldiers so I just hid and chilled with Barney for a bit. Bro died like 2 seconds later though. At this point things were looking rough to the point where I was using the vending machines just to get as much health as I could. I was hogging the tram for the rest of my journey but my problems came up when I was forced to ditch it since there was no way I was getting past all of these Vortigons and soldiers to lift up a barrier. And without the tram, another big problem in this challenge came up. When going up this elevator, we're faced with explosives blocking a path. Getting past this is the only way to progress forwards without the tram. I had no choice but to use the satchel charges that were conveniently placed. Unfortunately, blowing up these sets of boxes will also kill a soldier at the other end too which can be deemed as an unnecessary death from a weapon that isn't the crowbar. Fortunately, I can follow the first rule of this challenge. And so, I used the satchel charge and blew up the boxes, killing the soldier in the process. Did I feel guilty? Yes, I did. But I quite literally had no other choice. 
for the rest of the level I just sprinted past all the soldiers, hopped on this turret to eliminate those who were outside and thought it was best to just activate the rocket at the other side of the wall, instead of trying to fight off two soldiers at 7 HP. This chapter was overall the hardest so far and was certainly a challenge. Freeman, right? I've got a message for you. I put the new 4Gs on the Jeep. I trap until the bloody bottoms is underneath. Cause all my niggas got it out the streets. I keep a hundred racks inside my Jeep. Cause I'm balling. <laughs> Not really much to say about this chapter, and it honestly went as smooth sailing as you can imagine. I completely ignored the tranquilizer dart and used the barnacle to get up to the door, and ran past pretty much everything before being forced off to fight a couple of vortigons and headcrabs. It was basically mandatory to kill them in order to progress, as a scientist at the other side of the door just won't open it for you if there's enemies nearby. So I baited them down and individually took them out. It was a tedious process, a lot of saving and loading to make sure I got the best outcome out of this, but it paid off. I showed my utmost gratitude and respect for the brave Black Mesa scientists and went on my way. The assassin part was pretty simple. I just did what needed to be done, pull the lever and raise the garage. There was no way I'd be fighting these guys with just my crowbar, as they're annoying as hell with the entire arsenal anyway. Now because I was just so dangerous with my crowbar alone, these motherfucking soldiers just had to jump me. Oh man, I lost the crowbar. I think we just might have to end the challenge here. Ah, oh, never mind. This chapter was a good break from the chaotic running I've been doing. The only part I struggled on was getting over the trip mines in the conveyor belt section and trying to 1v1 this bull squid. The rest was all good. In all honesty, I think this chapter was my favourite part of the playthrough since it delivers many creative ways to kill enemies. Fighting off all these hound eyes was going to be next to impossible so I just hopped over the electrified fence. This chapter has a lot of firefights with the military so that was my first problem. Lucky for me, the map has two of these test chambers that will obliterate everything in the room. Am I a pussy for this strap? Of course, but rule number two does say that I can use anything to my advantage that basically isn't a weapon. I love how these soldiers were more focused on killing the headcrabs in front of them, rather than paying attention to the massive laser that was going to kill them. Exploding these trip mines for the next sequence did pose itself as a challenge at first, but then I found myself coming up with an idea of luring an NPC to run past it. So I just freed the headcrabs within the cages from earlier and had one just jump into it. I hid whilst the alien grunts and soldiers were duking it out and once the damage was done, just sprinted right past them. Not gonna lie, the laser portion of this chapter where you collect the Tau Cannon was pure luck. After dying multiple times, my final method of dealing with this was having the soldiers focus on me whilst the bull squid was sorting them out. These boys must be tweaking to deem a man building a crowbar higher on the threat level than a hostile extraterrestrial species. I picked up the Tau Cannon just for the badass music and escorted the scientists out. Then I had a mini heart attack because I completely forgot that there was one soldier that was waiting for me. Luckily the soldiers in Half-Life can't move and shoot at the same time. So as he was going for another position, I just got the drop on him and smacked the fuck out of him. The last sequence of this level was a nightmare. I had no idea that I'd be struggling on taking out a single soldier for this level. Long. I went there, realised that I was not built for this and just went straight back to grab Barney, who I was keeping in the test chamber just in case. However, the moment I arrived, the soldier for some reason was shielding himself from his own grenade, so I took this opportunity to just smack him out. Now very similar to my circumstances in Honor Rail, there were explosive boxes in the way. At first, I thought of using the turrets above but their accuracy was just too good. The only way to advance was to use a weapon that I picked up, so I used a singular revolver shot and moved on. I could have also used the trip mines here by setting one up and hopping over, but I was just so eager to experience the upcoming purgatory that was. Surface tension is where Half-Life is at its peak. 
you finally acquired the bulk of your arsenal back and are finally outside. This chapter delivers tons of memorable firefights between Gordon and the military in vast open areas and truly shows the gloomy realization that the soldiers themselves are struggling against the Zen forces. I think that it's the longest chapter in the game too, and that sounds all good on paper from a gameplay perspective, right? Yes, and it's executed perfectly when you're using everything in your kit, but with only the crowbar, this was hell. The start already had me wondering just how I was going to do this. There's no way that I was going to take out 5 soldiers with just a crowbar. So I went back to my trusty strategy of just running. And thanks to the autosave feature I was in a good spot. It took me a couple of tries but there is a way to get to the other side of the dam without flooding it. If you time your jump just right you can squeeze in between these two rocks negating all fall damage. My second biggest hurdle was the section with the cliffside. This was honestly the worst part of the run. At every turn, the soldiers have a clear line of sight on you, so you have to be very calculated on how you're moving. I was abusing the hell out of the quick save feature, but even then I had to rely on sheer luck. After spending about 40 minutes dying again, again, and again, I was so close to giving up. But that was before this miracle happened. My drive was back to complete this run. I actually had a lot of fun during the next firefight with the tank because these stupid ass soldiers would just blow themselves up whilst I was chilling in the trenches. I wanted to grab some health behind the tank here but there is a soldier occupying it. I moved on since it just wasn't worth the risk but to my surprise after coming back to that place the dude just wasn't there. My guess is that he blew himself up with a grenade too. Anyways the rest of the chapter had me finding small opportunities to completely abuse the rules to my full advantage. Also did you know that these soldiers can actually press the button of the small car lift to crush you? That AI is smart as hell for its time. Escorting the security guard wasn't bad either. The alien grunts didn't target him at all and I would just bait myself out to the Vortigons so he could shoot them. It was here that I used the surface tension glitch with no hesitation. To those of you who are unfamiliar, if you position yourself above the security guard's head and move forwards, the game will completely glitch out and give you infinite amounts of health. Even though it was stuck at 225, it just kept stacking. Now you may argue that this is essentially enabling god mode and to that I say, yeah. <laughs> You're alright bro. But going back to rule 3, it's a speedrun strat that I can use. And I have suffered enough. So to save my sanity, I had to do this. Like I might as well utilize it instead of nerfing myself for no reason. If the opportunity's there, why not take it? So I stayed here for a bit, even made myself a coffee and drank through it. I mean even the gargantua felt bad for me I'm and stopped chasing me bro. Me. So I had his approval to use the glitch for sure. Now I'm gonna start speeding through these upcoming chapters since I didn't really have any issues with them. We'd be here all day if I spoke about every single decision I made. Equipped with the ability to just not give a shit anymore, I eagerly bolted past all the upcoming threats that stood in my way because there was just no reason to fight them. I used a quick save and load exploit to delay the spawning of the snarks and reset the Vortigon attacks and just sprinted past the tank. I blew up my path and let the factions duke it out as I just ran and passed them. I'm gonna be honest, doing this shit felt so illegal. The only thing I worried about for this chapter was the ending sequence where you have to wait for the teleporter. But this was actually easier than I thought. I thought I was going to have to use the glitch with the snark in order to just get to the next level, but that wasn't the case. I made sure that the little floating things had their aggro on me and just had Barney shoot them to death. So it all played out well. Uh, 
Uh, boring platforming and funny portal. For the fight with Gonark, I jumped into the big mama's nasty testicle and crowbarred her from the inside. What the fuck? I actually wrote that in the script. <laughs> but this was the most effective way to deal with her as approaching her up front and kneeling in front of her big bollock, oh my god there's no saving this, will result in her smacking you away. It was a very tedious process. There was also no way I could fight her at the final stage. So to make things easy I just crowbarred the ground and slipped into the portal. Yet another calm chapter besides the vaults constantly pushing you off platforms, I didn't struggle one bit and just ran through everything. But before going into the final boss fight, I just showcased all of my weapons to show that I hadn't used any. And my evidence here was the fact that the SMG still wasn't reloaded from the 25 bullets in its magazine when you first pick it up, and there was also that one revolver shot that I used before surface tension. I hadn't reloaded the gun yet. Now then, on to... This boss fight was a drag, like I'm not even lying. I definitely spent at least a couple of hours trying to figure out what the best strategy was for taking him out. I saw online that if you circle below him, he'll hit himself with his attacks. But after doing this for a bit, I find out that he just heals himself with the crystals and teleports you to other parts of the map time and time again. So the next step of action was to take down the crystals by either hopping on them or just having the nylon hit them with his attacks. This was testing my patience by a landslide as I was just so sick and tired of being teleported into the room with the guard time and time again. Eventually I saw my window of opportunity after circling around him for what felt like an eternity, hopped on that motherfucker's head and crowbarred his ass to death. With that I made a deal with the G-man and hopped straight into the portal. So that concludes the question, can you beat Half-Life with just a crowbar? Yes, and to me this is my official headcanon of how Gordon survived Black Mesa. Did I get an achievement out of this? No. Why did I do this? I hate myself. And most importantly, what's the underlying message of this video? Uh, play Half-Life, it's peak. I also wanted to point out that this challenge took about two days to complete, so it was definitely mental warfare. Thank you all so much for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed the content. I'm also sorry that this video took so long to release. We're also super close to 1k subs, so that's insane. I'll see you guys in the next one.